I really enjoy my time alone with God every morning. I, 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 like everyone else, I enjoy reading books or getting together with other Christians or even listening to sermons, but there's just no replacement for my time with God when it's just He and I and I actually believe that He's communicating with me. Like I'll, I'll be reading the Bible and things will jump out to me and I'll, I'll just feel like He's speaking directly to me. And, and the thought of prayer, and now I'm speaking directly to Him, and it's this relationship, it's, it's, it's like nothing else. It, you know, the Bible says in Colossians 1, verse 16, it says that I was made by Him, but I was also made for Him. And I, and I think about that word for, like, okay, there's a reason why I exist. I was made for Him. And it's similar to Ephesians 2.10, where it talks about how um, his workmanship and I was created for good works that he determined beforehand that I should walk in them. So, so even before he made me, there were these things that I was that I was made to do. And sometimes when I pray in the morning, I say, God, show me today. I know there's a reason why I exist. And it's, it's not just this, this weird, okay, there's a purpose to my life, but there's a purpose to this day. And then I say, God, okay. So as I go about my day, Show me what I'm supposed to do. And it's amazing how different the day seems to unfold. I mean, in, in a real way, like things just happen where I go, wow, I think that was part of my purpose today. Like this is what I was made for. It takes effort to hear from God in the morning. Like sometimes I'll notice I don't really put a lot of effort or thought into my time with God and maybe I, I rush through it because it takes work. Like I really have to think and clear my mind of everything else and, and I need that in the morning. Because it seems like once you start your day, there's just there's so much noise and racket and voices and everything else and all these different influences. And, and some people feel like, well, my day's so busy, I don't have time to, to, to just sit and quietly and just focus on God. And yet, in my mind, I think, well, you don't really have time not to. I, I mean, how can you afford not to think about God? We, we all will make statements like, I know I'm not guaranteed tomorrow, but I, I mean, how many people really live that way and really think, okay, I, I want to know, I want to hear from God, I want to be close to Him, because this literally might be the day that I see Him. I mean, isn't that the most intense thought to think that there's no reason why Today wouldn't be the very day that I actually stand before the throne of God and see Him. What if this was the day that you actually saw God? I mean, I've, I've read about Him, I've spoken to Him, I, I think about Him, I have this relationship with Him my whole life, but that is the craziest thought to think that I literally could see Him today. I was thinking about this time when, uh, this is gonna sound really weird, but I was invited to go to an autopsy, okay, to watch an autopsy take place. And I couldn't go, but a friend of mine actually went and he was telling me about it. And he was saying how it was absolutely the most disgusting thing he had ever seen in his life. <laughs> because he says, you're, you're watching, here's this human body. Okay, imagine this, he just died not that long ago, sitting on a table or, or laying on a table and uh, and the guy just comes and just cuts him right up the middle, 
spreads them apart. Then he takes like these garden like lopper type of things, you know, that you would break branches with and just, he just went down each of the ribs and then just pulled the body open. And then he started pulling things out of the body, like different parts out of this guy's chest. And he was like, oh my gosh, like you, you can't do that to a human being. And he just, he was so blown away by almost like this disrespect for a human body. And I was thinking to myself, I am so glad I didn't go because I think I would have thrown up. But then I thought, maybe it would have been good to go. Maybe it would have, maybe there's something healthy about just seeing a, a body laying on a table and realizing, yeah, that's all it is. It's just a body and that'll be me one day. Because sometimes it's almost like we have too high of a regard for human bodies and too high of a regard for our life on earth and it's something there's something healthy in seeing another human being laying on a table knowing that yeah that'll be me someday and and i know i'm broaching a subject that some would say is maybe taboo or we just shouldn't talk about this or it's kind of morbid but but king solomon said in ecclesiastes 7 verse 2 he says it's better to go to a house of mourning. He goes, it's better to go to a house where people are mourning someone's death. It's better to do that than to go to a house of feasting where everyone's just celebrating and laughing. And he says, the reason is, he says, because death is the destiny of every man and the living should take this to heart. He says, we, we, should, we should be in places where there's death and where there's mourning. He goes, because we who are living need to realize, oh, that's going to be me one day. And he says, it's good. We have to take this to heart. We have to think about it. In your groups, I, I hope this doesn't sound disrespectful, but I, I think it would be good for each of you maybe to talk about some people in your life who, who died uh, abruptly. Um, I know we all kind of die unexpectedly, but but just some people where you were shocked, they, they passed away and maybe talk about some of their achievements, things they did while they're on the earth, but also be willing to talk about some of their regrets. Maybe you had an opportunity to talk to them at the end of their lives I and mean, what an honor. And maybe they shared with you some of the things they wish they had done differently. It is so important to learn from people like that. And then after you do that, talk about your own life and talk about what if today literally was the day you came before God what would you regret? And don't just talk about it and don't just say, oh, I need to change this because I don't want to end my life this way. I mean, talk about things you can change today. Say, you know what, this is what I want to do because I don't want my life to end this way. I know this would be a regret, so I will change this literally. I will do this today. And share that with the group and then hold each other accountable on these issues.